Welcome back to another War Tales video. Okay, so the video today is going to be having a quick look at the camp function of War Tales. Um, just having a little bit of a chat about, you know, how the camp works, what it looks like when you've got all of the equipment in your camp, that kind of thing. Um, some little do's and don'ts and just that kind of stuff. So the camp feature within War Tales is actually one thing that I really enjoy. It's kind of like another character in the party that you want to develop alongside your party. Uh, I wouldn't compare it to anything that is, you know, roguelike or anything like that, because obviously if your party dies, the camp goes and you begin the next game with exactly what you can see on screen at the moment. Uh, so this is a brand new party kicking off and going into the camp as soon as the game opens. And you can, you know, see what you start with, just the simple campfire, one pony, and your little tinker's bench or the workshop over here on the right hand side as well. So the camp starts really small and um, really the, the main thing that you want to use is the fire to get your happiness up. Though assigning a tinker pretty much straight off the bat is actually a really, really good idea as well um, because when a tinker is assigned to the workbench, you will actually produce tools uh, per rest as well. Um, so saving you about five gold a rest for each tool you produce, which is nice. Um, the more people you have around the campfire, up to a limit of four, will increase your happiness faster. And getting your happiness up does mean that you get your um, valor point bonus and experience point um, bonus a little bit more quickly as well. Um, you want to be running at that kind of 15 uh, happiness just because it makes uh, leveling up a little bit quicker, which is always a good thing. Um, so overall, the camp starts out really, really simple. And the main idea is that over the course of the game, you will improve your, your camp as your party gets stronger. So all of the camp upgrades are done through the compendium and the workshop here. So this is where the, the group that you start with and the first two that you will most likely make are the tent and the cooking pot. Uh, I do recommend trying to make these earlier rather than later because they do help with valor point generation and food production. So getting those two faster is uh, actually probably a little bit more useful than spending those resources on crafting gear to begin with as well in terms of saving you money and getting you ready for fights with some valor points handy. Um, as far as the rest of them go, they all are all unlockable and um, I'll talk through how you unlock them in just a moment. I'm just going to flip o flick over to the other game. Okay, game loaded. And here we are in a company that has got pretty much everything available in the current early access. Uh, and I'll just kind of talk through some of what those things are. So obviously the cooking pot is one that I did just mention. Uh, and you can have your cook assigned to your cooking pot, which gives you a slight reduction in your daily food consumption as well. It's a pretty small reduction at the moment, given um, some of the changes that they've made to food balancing in, in, in early access. Uh, but look, any, any extra food reduction I think is, is handy. So I like having my little cook assigned there. Uh, the tent being the next one that most people are going to buy is great because it uh, adds extra valor points for each character that you have assigned to them as well as increasing your troop bonus, so the maximum number of valor points that your troop can have. Um, having a really high valor point total is quite useful on larger fights, and particularly as your company grows in size, the more valor points you have, the more damage you can do. So more valor points is always a good thing. Um, so you might see here, sort of just at the top, I've actually got some prisoners assigned to my tent as well. Uh, so it can be handy keeping some, you know, some labor, I guess, uh, on hand and those people can be assigned to your tent and you can see that number going back up to four out of four once i drag them nearby um, to generate extra valor per rest so cooking pot and tent two very good uh things to add in as quickly as you can um now the next kind of stuff you see me do a little grouping of them um, i kind of like grouping them like this so that i can see uh very quickly at a glance whether i've got all the stations occupied and whether anything needs to happen with them so the first one is the meat drying rack. Now, this is actually one that I do recommend picking up, um, I mean, as early as you can. It's, it's one of those things that um, you'll actually get from a tracker's lair. So this one, I believe you pick up from the tracker's lair, the Highland Trackers Camp in Tiltron. Um, and you can pay either 200 fangs for it, or you can attempt to steal it. Um, the meat drying rack is one of the better ones to have. And what you do with this is you, you, you sort of get any meat and animal carcasses are the best to use. 
And if you pop two animal carcasses in, you'll get 10 cured meat per rest. Um, it gives you something to do with all of those carcasses rather than just eating them. And it is in essence turning one food that weighs two pounds into five food that weighs half a pound in total. Um, or, you know, two carcasses for four pounds into uh, 10 food for one pound in total per rest. Uh, it's a really good way to get a whole bunch of um, of cured meat. And as you can see, I've got a stack of 70 in there. I like keeping that for, you know, just filling in the gaps around uh, what I'm trying to feed my companions. You do get the little exclamation marks when there is nothing currently in uh, or being used in a meat drying rack. So it is worth just keeping an eye out for those as well. The tanning rack is the next one. So you can also use animal carcasses on your tanning rack. Um, I think because I've only got the one, it's not showing up here, uh, but you can't use your other, other meat stock basically. And with your tanning rack, uh, it's because I put it in there. Um, with your tanning rack, you'll get two leather for every three carcasses you put in. So you're getting less leather, but leather is more expensive. Uh, and it, it was in shorter supply in the demo. I think having the drying rack is probably better value than the tanning rack um, pretty early though, uh, early in the game. Um, I like having the tanning rack just to have that extra leather for if I want to create some more stuff, but overall, eh, I don't know. It's not, it's not mandatory to have anymore. Uh, next thing along is the lectern. Now the lectern is not unlocked through uh, any of the tracking grounds uh, the lectern is actually unlocked when you first get the the first thing that you might want to use for um, being a scholar now with the lectern you will find some small things called fragments and when you get these fragments in your inventory you can right click them here and they'll pop over into this research section and it'll have a day counter over here on the right um, the, depending on the quality of the fragment, it'll take between three, five, or seven days to finish research. And at the end of that, you'll get either a trinket, which you can just sell for some cash, or something like uh, an amazing weapon, which, spoiler alert, if you do not want to see uh, which weapon it is, uh, look away now. But you do get access to the ingenious one an absolutely amazing one-handed mace through raiding the tomb. So I highly recommend raiding the tomb and researching the uh, purple fragment at the uh, lectern when you can. You do have to have a scholar assigned to the lectern, otherwise it won't progress in research as well. So just make sure you've got them there. And that's actually why I like putting these two next to each other because then I can see very quickly whether I've got people assigned. Um, the training dummy. So the training dummy gives everyone a flat experience boost in combat, which is great, as well as uh, giving the person assigned to it some additional experience as well. It does depend what level they're at. So a lower level character receives less experience than a high level character. So at level four, you'll be getting more per level, uh, which is fine. You know, you, you just progress through the levels that little bit quicker. Uh, and it's really nice to just sort of um, power level, I guess, quote unquote, a character up that little bit quicker when you're adding new companions to a squad that's already quite strong. So, you know, a lot of my guys are already level five here. Uh, and then I've picked up a couple of level three pikemen just to round the squad out. Um, Tinker's Bench, I already discussed making a tool each day that someone is assigned. So I still have them assigned there. I don't know what my stock of tools is like. Oh, only six at the moment. So yeah, worth, worth kind of keeping there even into the later game. Um, cooking pot, I've already gone through the watchkeeping stool. So this one, again, I think you raid this from a bandit camp instead of purchasing it from a tracking camp. Um, but the watchkeeping stool just reduces your chance of being attacked at rest by 10%. So at the moment, my danger level when I right click on the fire is none. If this was 10%, oh, maybe if I move someone away, no, we're still at none. So having this person assigned to the watchkeeping stool doesn't actually help at the moment. Uh, and I could get some more happiness, but already at maximum and with plenty of influence. So much of a muchness. Um, does help and can just reduce that chance from 10 to 0, which is great. Means that you are definitely going to rest no problems at all. And the last one is the gurney. So the gurney is one that you actually pick up from a quest in... Um, the province of Arthas. So you actually get the gurney from a quest at St. Elior Abbey here by uh, providing 10 snow iris to the first aid quest here. Um, the gurney is really good. It does heal one 
injury per rest. So if a character gets injured in battle, you assign them to that gurney and that injury will be gone when they wake up. Uh, I kind of put it off to the side because I am very forgetful and I, I tend to not assign people with injuries to it and just use medicine. On a per rest basis, the gurney is actually one of the best value items because if you think about either medicine or healing a character in town, that's 20 gold. Getting that every single rest is actually very worthwhile compared to the you know five gold you're making from your workshop or the, the small amount of money you can make from tanning or meat. Um, so that pretty much wraps up the, the stuff that's in your camp. There's a couple of little things that I would note. So if you move your campfire, you can see that it's currently three out of four. If I drag that along, the people don't move with it and they do get unassigned. So you see that it's now zero out of four. So just be careful while you're there. And even if you drag it back, they don't get reassigned. So you've actually got to reassign those companions to it just to make sure you're still getting the bonuses. I find it happens most often with the tent because that's the one that I move people to and from the, the most. And, you know, sometimes if particularly if the people are over the back of the tent, sometimes you click on the tent instead of them. Um, so just be careful as you're going around. But I do really love the camp. I love that you can zoom around and, you know, check it out, drag things around. Um, I normally assign my ponies so that they look like they're in a little bit of a, you know, horse line, that kind of thing. Um, but there's so many different ways to organize it. And look, it's, it's just quite nice. Um, the other cool thing I think is that it reflects where you are on, in the world. So if you move from a, you know, grassy area into a snowy area and then you go camping, you will see that it's now all snow and frost, which I just think is a nice little touch, a nice little touch. Um, the upcoming stuff for camping. So while it's not mentioned explicitly in the roadmap, uh, what I am expecting to see is multiple tiers of camping gear. So with a lot of the weapons, so any of the kind of tier one weapons as such, once you learn those and craft them, you get the ability to learn a new recipe in the compendium. And when you learn iron axe and make an iron axe, it'll teach you um, a stronger axe that's kind of a tier two axe that requires some white leather to make. I expect something a little bit similar with the camping gear. And so, you know, maybe a better tent will increase your maximum valor points by more or allow more companions to be assigned. Um, maybe an upgraded gurney can heal two people per rest instead of one. Training dummy provides more experience, that kind of stuff. You know, some, some pretty straightforward bonuses, but still incrementally, they really compound to make your party a much more effective fighting force over time. And, you know, if it was something like two people um, on a gurney per rest or something along those lines, like, you know, being able to create two gurneys per rest as well um, is another way they could go with it. Um, it does mean that you can sort of save, save more money. You can have a larger party without having to worry as much about the, the injuries and the money stacking up too badly. Uh, and it also means you don't have to run back to town if you've forgotten medicine or something along those lines. So I'm really keen. Uh, I am hoping there's some camp upgrades in the quarter one patch, but we will see how we go, I guess. Uh, I'm always really optimistic and uh, I know there has been Christmas shut down and I do hope the, uh, the Shiro guys had a good break as well. Alrighty, um, that pretty much wraps up the camping video. If you do have any questions for stuff that I didn't answer, um, please ask in comments below. I do check them all and more than happy to, to answer there or via Discord. Um, oh, actually, there was one more thing. You can actually build a brewing vat. You know, if you get lucky enough with a drop, I haven't in this run so far. And the brewing vat just increases your happiness and allows you to produce some alcohol as well. Um, this last one in the bottom right-hand side, I believe just by the image is going to be something like a beekeeper's, um, you know, thing where you can produce honey maybe. Um, but that's pure speculation and it's not implemented in the game yet. So if you have that, and you haven't built it and it's really driving you insane, don't worry, it's not you, you're not missing something, it's not in the game yet. So stay tuned and it will be at some stage. All right, that is CAG over and out. Have a great evening. Mm -hmm.